Hi, it's Professor Stephen Forsyth here. I'm the curator for the Crown of Actor Pub MLST, and this is the third in our series of videos about using a particular database. So what we're going to be looking at is this third part, the whole genome MLST, and we're going to be looking at how it's an expansion of the conventional seven loci into things like uh, looking at it for taxonomy. Uh, we made that up because it seemed to be a useful option. Uh, then you can look at ribosomal MLST where we have 53 loci and then we'll move on to COG MLST which is 1865. We're going to be using uh, these databases in part four looking at extras. So we're going to kick off looking at these alternative MLST schemes uh, also known as whole genome MLST because they're looking at genomes in the public domain which we've uploaded and so you can do in silico analysis. But we're also going to be looking at analysing those genomes uh, by blasting them, whether for single loci, uh, locus or multiples. So let's just reduce that and then go to our website. So here we are, classic one, uh, if you're not sure the Cronobacter MLC database, go to isolates, and what we're going to be looking at are these two options here. Let's first go to the genome comparator, and we have over here on the left all the strains for which we have the genomes uploaded. They're not only Cronobacter, we've got some others up there for, as outliers when we make phylogenetic trees. And let's select all of them, and what we'll do we want the uh, species there. We'll pick the MST profile and then what we'll do, we'll click submit. If we want the alignments as well, why not? Um, click submit here. And this will take about two minutes to run through the database. And it will look at each of the seven loci as defined in the database and go off to the genomes to find the equivalent and what the allele number is. If it's a new allele, then it will tell us that it's a new one, and that's then to be defined in the future. This will take a, a short while to run through, uh, but hopefully we'll start to get some of the alleles in a moment. The more alleles we do, obviously the longer it's going to take, but I say this should just take about two minutes to run through. So here we've got ATPD uh, being done. And I don't know about you, your patients, uh, but last we got something, uh, and now it's doing the fusée. Already you can see that we got the classic of number one, five. Here we got the fusée result, and you can see quite a few of these are one, one, three, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, and those Novak Cronobacter can uh, take a guess as to what the ST is going to be of these. So we've got jar B coming out in just a second. There's the jar B. And you can see that there's a shading here as the number gets further and further from the initial one in the database. So the shading will change. And it's just doing uh, extra analysis at the moment. It's going to make a split tree. And there's a split tree. It's now going to take a few seconds to generate the alignments as well that can be downloaded. So, and we can just see here. So if you want the alignments in FASTA file format, just click there. And those are the seven loci for each of those strains which have been sequenced. If we go here, then we have a split tree. And we can see over here all the Cronobac to Sakazaki together. And here's the Clinical complex four strains of Cronobacter Sakazaki being pulled together. If we scroll up, we can see the results. Now we can go along, we can see how the shading reflects the distance from the original strain. Now that's seven loci. The database allows us to, we just choose, uh, say, two strains. Then we might want to do a uh, taxonomy of those two. And 
we can submit and it goes through those two strains for OMPA and RPOB. It's just a, a scheme that we put together. We thought it might be of use. And it tells us the profile for uh, strain 658 and the profile for strain 701. Now what you can do, if you want, you could choose your own loci. So you could choose, you know, three, four, five, ten, hundred, whatever loci of your choice, up to you. Or you can use uh, some of the other predetermined ones. Here's the ribosomal MLST. And if we run through that one, that's going to look at those strains for 53 alleles. It's obviously going to take longer than the seven alleles we just looked at, but hopefully with just a couple of strains, it won't take too long. If I was to do the whole database, then my advice is to simply bookmark uh, and then leave it for a while, come back to it. So we'll just wait a short while for this to, to run through. So there we are, it's beginning to go through the 53. Uh, it's going to upload in a few more seconds. So 32% through. Halfway. And we can see that some of the loci are the same here uh, for the ribosomal proteins. Same, 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 different, different. Here's a truncation uh, or missing, sorry, it's a missing one. And some are new, which are not been analyzed before in the database. So 94%, and in a few more seconds it will be complete. There we are, all done. So now we have the ribosomal analysis, and what you can do from those, you can export the FASTA file, you can make phylogenetic trees for the ribosomal proteins. Now, one of the big changes that we've done is here for the COG MLST. And what COG MLST does, it looks at the clusters of orthologous genes, and it's pulled out 1,865 alleles. And uh, this one's already been running. So uh, here's one. Uh, I started off a short while ago to save some time. And you can see all these alleles which are being analyzed. And that will eventually give us a FASTA output for each allele. We can make phylogenetic tree or we can go into split tree analysis that I'll show in the fourth video. If you're going to do the COG MST, then I would really would allow overnight if you're going to do a large number of strains. Now let's move to the other part of this database. So genome comparator we just looked at. You can always do presence absence of low size, quite straightforward, but let's look at BLAST. And let's do all the strains in the database. And let's go to publication. So here's one uh, headed by Ben Tor, the FDA. And here we have the sequence for uh, O antigen gene cluster. And I, I don't know on the fast day, so we can just whip through, copy it, just copy it. And we can just blast all the genomes. It helps when we give a little reminder of the species. Just submit. So here we go. Now that's about 8,000 loci, 8,000 nucleotides. So these, saying 800, 400, uh, just for the example we're going through, we're not going to be too concerned over. You can see we get this hit here for the Malonaticus strain 681, uh, which is one from the breast abscess. And we'll, we can look at these individual strains in a moment as we go through. We're going to see that that blast hit also coincides with Coronabacter zurichensis, uh, previously known as Enterobacter tersiensis. Uh, and here we have a, a match with this Coronabacter malonaticus, and that's a strain which Ben Tor has sequenced in the first place. So. Uh, obviously, no surprises there. Um, here we have a second Zurichensis where we have a hit 
another Zurichensis. And then we have this Malonaticus giving a hit as well. If we're to click here, uh, and this is a particular example useful to know about, um, it gives us the isolate. This is roughly the uh, alias as well, which is nice to have. However, please note this is one that was published in 2014 as Cronobactus akazaki, um, but all the genome analysis that we do indicates that it is a Malonaticus, and unfortunately it's been misnamed in that publication. Uh, that is unfortunate. If we're to scroll back up, here we have that 681. Uh, we just click over here in the ID number and it tells us that strain was isolated in 1977. It's the species type strain for for going back to Malonaticus, and it's a breast abscess isolate. And here's the aliases, and it's really useful to have those aliases. So when you look at the database, you can look at other publications and you can link them all together. So I think it's a really useful aspect now of the database, how you can blast sequences. And in the fourth video, we're going to look at a, a number of examples of doing that. So I'm just going back to the, to the home page and say thanks very much for listening. And let's move on to part four.